I don't review enough baritone ukuleles. So here's one, but one that's left me asking quite a few questions. Keep watching. Yes, welcome back. It's got a ukulele review day as ever. Summary video review. If you look at the link below this video, it'll take you back to the website where you get a lot more information about this one and all the other reviews are there too. You'll also see some links down there where you can help keep this site going by donating because this is not a commercial enterprise paid by the brands. They'd just be adverts. So my eternal thanks go to people who've done what these people have done in the last couple of weeks and made kind donations to keep going. You can do that too if you look at the links below. And you'll also help me out if you click the subscribe button and ring the little bell symbol on YouTube and you'll get notified of new stuff coming your way. Before I get into the review, a quick thank you to George and Mandy who run the Bracken Bracklesham ukulele weekends. I've just seen an absolute rocking weekend uh, in photographs online, which, which they held in Eastbourne, which looked to be amazing. They have lots of others going on through the year. Next one is 1st to the 4th of March on the Isle of Wight in the UK. All the links to the Bracklesham uh, events are on my ukulele festival calendar on the website. Thank you very much for the t-shirt to George and Mandy. Much appreciated. Right, let's get into the review. As I say, um, no, I don't review enough baritones, and that's not for want of trying. I do ask for them, but people just tend to send me uh, sopranos through to tenors in the main. So I do try and re redress the balance now and again. I bought this one. This one caught my eye for being very good value. This is the Snail SUB M1 baritone, and it is quite a simple but classy looking instrument. Uh, big body, as you can see, with the baritone extra scale length there. Um, I've looked at a few snails before and they've always done reasonably well on the site. Um, they're very well liked, very popular. This one is made of all laminate wood, mahogany, laminate mahogany. I've got no problem with laminates. I say that all the time. I take a good laminate over a poor quality solid wood all the time. And with a bigger bodied instrument where you've got more resonating top, uh, the laminate is freer to do its work and, and things start getting closer to, to what solid sounds like. All solid, mahogany. Mahogany isn't the most interesting wood to look at and this isn't uh, flamed or curled or anything like that or fiddle back. It's just straight up mahogany in this attractive enough orange colour. Double bout shape, very traditional looking ukulele. You could call it very classy looking. No real complaints. We'll come on to the decor in a moment as to what I think of that. Um, but no real complaints at all. The bridge, simple through body design and this bat wing shape that Snail use quite a lot. Uh, that's made of ebony, very tidy. Uh, the saddle is made of bone and is compensated on the top. So that's very Snail. Decoration, very limited. We have an abalone sound hole ring and a bit of binding around the top and back with a black purfling strip, which you can't really notice because it's brown. Um, it's classy and simple. But with it being such a big body, I think it looks a little bit empty. Is that the right word? Very, very simple. But I did say this is a value instrument. When we come on to the price, obviously they're trying to keep the price down. But I just think it needs something. Even, even a bigger sound hole ring or more pronounced sound hole ring might work better. Minor gripe, isn't it? Finished in a gloss, which is tidily done pretty much everywhere. A bit of pooling around here. A bit overdone there, but it's I've seen much worse. It's pretty tidy, actually. Inside, pretty tidy too. Notched linings, little thin braces. Not much more to say. And that laminate top is fairly thin as well. So it's a nice resonant instrument. Big real estate, as I say. The neck wood is not specified. It's very pale. Very different colour to the body, which irritates me. There's a joint in the heel and a joint at the headstock, both of which are pretty obvious, and it's glossed, which I would prefer to be sat in. My main gripe, though, is whilst it tapers down to a kind of flattened off, shallowed profile up here, this is a 35mm nut on a baritone. I know it's not a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking, as the scales get bigger, manufacturers make their nuts a bit wider. 35 here and 27 between the outer strings. I've played sopranos with more space on the neck. That's just really disappointing to me. I know it's a personal thing, and I some people like 35mm nuts, but on a baritone? 
No, I'd want more. I'd want more up here. You can get away with more up here. Uh, why did they do that? I, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. And I find that really disappointing. Um, topped with an ebony fingerboard. When I look closely at it, though... Oh, come on, focus. It's not going to do it for me, is it, today? Trust me. Uh, when I look closely at it, I can see layers in it. So I think this is reconstituted ebony. I've got nothing wrong nothing wrong with re reconstituted ebony. No problem with it at all. It's probably more eco-friendly. But if I'm right and it is reconstituted, they should say so, which they don't. Maybe I'm wrong, but I can see the lines in it. Mm, I'm sure it's reconstituted. It comes with 20 frets, 14 to the body. That's edge bound in a brown wood to hide the fret ends. No sharp edges at all. Pearl position dots, very simple. Face out at 5, 7, 10. Double 12s, one at the 15th. And there are side dots too. The nut is made of bone, and whilst the setup on this is okay, the nut is really kind of hefty and sharp on the edges. I can feel it when I play first position. It's actually quite painful. It digs into the hand and leaves a mark. It's sharp. I played a fender like this once. That's not right. I don't like that. That needs tidying, dressing back, something. It's 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 uncomfortable. The usual snail headstock. Um, Faced in ebony. I've seen some press pictures of these where that ebony is pretty much jet black This is kind of pale and stripy. I like it for that and I like the way they don't quite go to the edge with their facings So it gives it a sort of like a raised effect The snail logo is a wooden inlay and I've said this many times before about snail that does not say snail That says s n o i e snoy why haven't they changed that? It doesn't say snail. <laughs> it just really irritates me. The tuners are guitar tuners. Sealed gears with a snail logo on them. Um, I'd much prefer open gears on a ukulele for weight, but we'll come on to that in a moment as well. But also, these are pretty cheap. They're all different tensions, and one of them is grinding a bit. Comes with unnamed strings, which look like clear nylon to me. More on that in a moment and a snail branded padded gig bag which is half decent but those strings in standard spec from snail this comes in c tuning g c e a it also comes with a low g uh, sorry no <laughs> don't build that up baz it comes with a high g a high g c e a i don't i'm gonna probably make too much of this but i'm sorry it's really irritated me Tuning is a personal preference. A lot of people buy baritones and want to put them into tenor tuning. I get that. But the standard baritone tuning is DGBE. Personally, I think that lower tuning suits the bigger body much better on sound. Um, I don't like GCEA on a baritone. You may. That's fine. <coughs> My gripe is not that they're here in the first place. Well, it is. It's the fact that they come with these as standard with a high G. Now, there are some new specialist stores stocking these who will offer to sell you this with a set of uh, DGBE strings on it for no extra cost. Great, but not all stores are doing that. You buy this thinking this is a baritone, get it home. It won't tune to G DGBE. It'd be far too weird. <coughs> a GCEA high G baritone. And that's caused me a bit of a problem in these scores because of the way it sounds because it doesn't sound like a baritone to my ears and i've scored this as if i'm reviewing a baritone because that's what it's called does that make any sense gcea on a baritone am i making too much of that just give it me with standard baritone strings i'll change to gcea if i want to not the other way around and the price uh, retail 219.99 in the UK. You'll regularly get them discounted just below £200, so it's not a lot of money. It's not heavy. It's light laminate, 710 grams for a big old instrument. Uh, and despite those heavy guitar tuners, it, it, it's not neck heavy, but it's body heavy. <laughs> it's dipping this way. It should balance, but I'd much rather a body heavy instrument than a neck heavy instrument, but it's not right. Um... But other than that, the setup is okay, and it's pretty tidy. Uh, the strings have irritated me a great deal. I don't think the tuners are any good. I don't like the sharp nut, and I don't like the 35mm nut width on a baritone. I find that a bit odd. 
So, let's have a play. <laughs> um, it's going to sound odd, I think. So, A. And these strings may go out of tune because these are nylons. So I've had this for weeks, but it's they're really stretching. C. G. High G. High G on a baritone. What? Okay. Let's... It's pleasant. Okay. Volume. It sounds a bit. It's not as loud as a baritone should be. It's not quiet, but it sounds a bit constrained, like, like there's some socks in there. And the sustain, too, is quite short considering we've got this big resonant top. Gone. Low sustain, low volume, well, not low volume, just not good on either of those counts. Doesn't sound like a paratone. Sounds like a pretty standard, not earth shattering, but decent enough tenor. Um, so I wouldn't give it a great score as a tenor sound. It's all right. Very clear, very bright. And I get, that's what's throwing me. Bright baritone. Jangly. It's not what a baritone should sound like. Finger picked. Volume's really gone, hasn't it? Very, very narrow note. I find hard to play. So, I said at the off, in the introduction, that this is an instrument that's just got me asking questions. Why that nut? Um, why those strings? Um, why would you buy it? Just get a tenor and probably save money um, for a similar spec. Like a tenor, probably quite a bit less. Um, you might just like the big body of the baritone, but it doesn't sound like a baritone. It just sounds like a very jangly, peppy tenor. It doesn't even sound like a woody, rich tenor with that high G on it. Um, I am just... It's not a bad instrument. It's well put together. It's well finished. That sound is... Okay, the sustain and volume aren't great, but it's a, it's a clear, pretty, bright sound. But I don't think it delivers as a baritone sound. And, as I say, I just, I've just had too many questions of why. Uh, for me to give this a recommendation. It's not a bad instrument. Somebody might say, do you know what, that's exactly what I want. I want a tenor tuned baritone that sounds like a tenor. I don't understand why you would, but somebody might. Great, wonderful. But I'm a subjective reviewer and I don't get it. If this is gonna be a baritone, make it sound like a baritone. Um, it doesn't even sound like a first class tenor. The Snail SUBM1 baritone. 21999, probably 195 if you shop around in the UK. All laminate mahogany. Um, close. No, is it close? 
I don't know what I'm saying because I'm finding it really hard to classify what I'm supposed to review it against. And I'm just going to leave it with that question. Why? Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> Good to be back. Um, and thanks for your ongoing support. I've got loads now in the run up to December. I think I'm booked up for most of the year. I've got all sorts of different things coming your way. And thank you for watching. Really rainy and grey out there. Looks horrible. But I hope you have a great week ahead. Look after each other and take care. Thank you. Bye bye.